So this is a HOA circuit or hand off auto control circuit in its most basic and simplest form. You don't get no more simpler than this. And I do have it wired up today so you can see exactly how it works. So there is not much components to this um, control circuit at all. Let's identify them first and then we can go over it. So first off, we have a motor overload contactor here that is normally closed. And here we have a overload here and it is the normally closed contactor on this overload which is you can see here that we are utilizing that set of contact next up we have the motor starter coil and the motor starter coil is right here usually labeled a1 and a2 and it'll show you the control voltage that it needs to turn on and then here we have a three position selector switch hand off and auto here I have a selector switch. If I turn it this way, hand, center will be off, and over here will be on auto. You can see it auto off hand. And then just a pressure switch in series to our auto position on our selector switch. And this is the pressure switch that we are using. And this pressure switch is gonna open pressure around 5 PSI and it closes at 20 PSI. So at 5 PSI of pressure, if it detects that it drops to 5 PSI, it is gonna open up its contacts and if it goes above 20 PSI, it's gonna close the contacts. Then I'm not using three phase power. Normally you would use three phase power for this, but I am using single phase 120. And then you can see it here. I have my hot and my neutral coming to the top side of our contactor. You can see there, it's coming to the top side of the contactor. And then it goes through our thermal overload, through our thermal overload, and then out to our motor. And we have a 120 fan cabinet motor here. So now we have all of our components identified. We can go ahead and see how it works. So on the off position, you can see that this lever here is not making contact to either the hand or the auto. Hand is just manual. You're manually sending control voltage directly over to your motor starter core. So let's say we want to put it to manual mode or hand. So let's put it to hand. As soon as we put it to hand, our contactor pulls in because we are sending a direct 24 volts DC to our coil, which then closes the contacts. Now it allows the 120 to travel right through this motor starter, through the overload, out these wires, and directly to our load. And here you can see that our fan is, is turning. Go ahead and shut that off. Shut it off. Cuts off power. Our fan motor slows down or it de-energizes. So what is happening when we turn it to hand is we have our 24 volts coming in and it terminates right there at our hand selector switch side. And when we switch our selector switch when we switch this, it's gonna make contact directly to that. It's gonna complete the path and send 24 volts directly to the motor starter coil and terminate out back to the comm side, which then energizes our motor starter coil. Now let's take a look at the auto side. So we go ahead, select auto. And now when we're using auto, it is gonna drive off of this pressure switch. The pressure switch does all the controlling of our motor starter coil. You can see here on the electrical diagram, it is normally open, but when enough pressure is applied against the switch, it is gonna then close. It will close, pressure pushes up against it, closes the switch, it goes over here to auto. We have the selector switch selected over to auto. So then it's gonna bridge this contact 
and supply our control voltage over to our motor starter coil. And whenever the pressure drops out, it then de-energizes the pressure switch, which then cuts off continuity. It cuts off this path for electricity to get over to the motor starter coil, and that's how it stops. So I have a regulator here bringing in air pressure, and we're using air pressure to control or close that pressure switch. So let's say this system here, whenever it detects that the system pressure has risen above 20 PSI, it's going to kick on this fan to bring the pressure back down. So again, we do have our selector switch turned to auto, so now it is running off this pressure switch. And now we're going to start to slowly turn on air pressure. So now we have about 10, 10 pounds of pressure coming in. And you can see that the switch has not closed yet because our contactor didn't pull. And now we are going to keep going up. There you go. Our switch just closed and we are right about, just about at 20. This gauge is probably not the most accurate. You can see it's all busted out already. It doesn't even have the glass protecting it. But anyways, this pressure switch closes at 20. So let's say our pressure is rising. It rises up to above 20. Pressure switch kicks in, the fan turns on, and then it is now lowering the pressure. So pressure starts lowering again. And now it dropped out because the, it, the pressure has been brought back down to a level where the pressure switch shuts off. And it's supposed to close off around five. And as you can see here, we are below five. So the pressure switch has cut off continuity. So right now the pressure switch opened back up and that is why we have stopped. And then without the fan running, pressure builds back up in the system. So pressure is building back up and it kicks right back on. Fan kicks on, lowers the pressure again, kicks off. Fan's no longer running, pressure system builds up again. Builds up again, it kicks right back on. And you can see here, it is all being controlled by the pressure switch. Pressure switch closes, contactor pulls in. Pressure drops, contactor opens back up. And our load stops. And that is how you automate it on the auto side. You need some sort of switch to detect something and it will automatically turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. The process is just repetitive over and over again. And that is how an HOA or hand off auto, hand just means manual, off and auto. That's how this system works in its most basic and simplest form. Until next time, deuces.